All right. NFL gambling. You ready? Come on. Let's talk NFL gambling. <sighs> I am pumped about this. Probably because we're doing less picks. It's not as easy to lose money this way. I kind of trust. We're doing less picks. Wait, well, I just did like nine picks. I've only got five on this one. That there's less games. It's sixteen games in the in college football. There's forty six games this week. I know. That's a lot of games. That doesn't even include think, the FCS stuff. Okay. okay. So it's it's gotcha. it is a little easier to go through these numbers than it is to go through forty six games. I completely right? agree with that. That's there why I go. like this game. So. Let's go ahead. That's why I like the NFL. I'm going to let you start us off. Uh, later on in this video or podcast or whatever, TJ is going to come back on with us. Yep. So we'll have TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Make sure you go download, subscribe to their podcast. Uh, he does a fantastic job. He's based down in Tampa. He is the Tampa Bay sideline reporter for the Buccaneers. You want to start us off? You start yep. off this to go around. Yep. We're going to go all the way to the last game of the weekend. I'm going okay. late night, Monday night football, going my guy, Vic Fangio, against John Gruden. I'm going Joey Flacco <laughs> against Joey Derek Flacco. Carr. I, I think the Broncos are going to be <laughs> so much better than anybody out there has given them credit for. I like this team to get close to 10 wins. I like this team to compete for a playoff spot. I think they're going to be really good. Now, now I kind of joke about the, the the Joey Flacco part because I don't I don't know how much I like that. I've seen this team, the Broncos, with an ungodly defense carry the corpse of Peyton Manning to a Super Bowl. Yeah, Joe Flacco today is better than the corpse of Peyton Manning his last season. Okay, because he can stand upright. He can still throw the ball 30, 40 yards down the field, tight spirals. Peyton couldn't throw a spiral to save his life the last season. He had the brains. He just didn't have the abilities. Flacco don't have the brains, but he's still got some abilities. He's still got some life in that arm. I think this defense is going to carry them. I think Von Miller, I think Bradley Chubb, I think this is one of the best secondaries in all of football. And I think this Raiders team that we all saw on Hard Knocks, they they don't look like they got their shit together. They're going to feel it. Okay. It's a pick em. It's a pick em. I thought I got to be careful because I don't like betting a lot of dog uh, 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 road favorites. Yeah. And when I saw this wasn't even a road favorite, I thought, are you, are you kidding me? Are there people in their right minds betting the Raiders? Raiders? You are we be. really doing this? Look, I might be wrong. It might bite me in the ass. I'm putting 100 bucks, minus 110. Give me the Broncos. I think they're going to kill them. I'm going to start out with Thursday night. Bears minus three against the Packers in Soldier Field. Look, it's minus 110. I got $75 on it. I love the Bears here. I understand Vic Fangio is, is in Denver now, but they still got dudes on that defense. They still got a good running game. They still got playmakers at wide receiver. I think Mitch Trubisky takes a little bit of a step forward. Matt Nagy, Nagy excuse me, good gracious, uh, showed me something last year as a head coach. I think he's a good head coach. I think he's a really good head coach. And on the other side, I don't know anything about Matt LaFleur. I do. I do. I do. We've, got a, we've got a year's experience with him, and he made a, an offense that wasn't good regress. It went yeah. backwards. Yeah. Um, and his previous experience was standing next to a really handsome man. A, a really smart man. And who's, who's, who's good at football. Yeah. He's really, really who, good who, at coaching football. Who, in his first year without Matt LaFleur, I bet actually he knows made a Super Bowl. Sean McVay's, like, exactly how he likes his coffee. <laughs> I'm taking the Chicago Bears minus three at minus 110. I'm putting $75 on it. Doing the same thing, making that exact same bet, and I got a little bit of information you're gonna like. Right now, we're doing this Wednesday night in the almost well t- Tuesday night. It's almost Wednesday morning. Well, uh, yeah, it's getting close. Seventy-eight percent of the bets are coming in on Green Bay Packers. 
Of course they oh, are. Oh, you Packer fans. Of course Just they are. Just set money on fire. Everybody loves Aaron Rodgers. I understand it. I, I'm telling you. A.A. Hey, hey, Ron. Y'all, y'all need to start enjoying your money more. Good gracious. What's wrong with y'all? All right, so you're, you're rolling Bears minus That's three. I'm going to give it two. Same, 75 bucks, too. Same thing. Exact okay. same pick. All right. I am going next up. Titans at the, Bron- uh, at the Browns. Almost said Broncos there. I'm going Titans plus five and a half at minus 110. Now, I'm only doing 50 bucks on it. But this is a good Titans team. They've got more talent on offense than they have ever had. They have got, and I understand the offensive coordinator situation might be a little bit different, but I don't see how much different Arthur Smith is as opposed to Matt LaFleur. I think you've got a healthy Marcus Mariota. You've got A.J. Brown. You've got Corey Davis. You've got Derrick Henry and that bunch. You've got Delaney Walker back, which is Marcus Mariota's uh, – Safety blanket, basically. You got a good Titans defense with Rashawn Evans and that whole bunch. I mean, they they got some dudes on defense. I like this team. I, look, Vrabel, Vrabel is a dude, man. And they take the personality of their coach. They fight and claw, and there is so much hype on these Browns. Now, I don't know that the Titans win the game, but you give me five and a half points to play with, uh, give me that all day long. I will take the Titans to cover the five and a half. I'm putting fifty dollars on it. Okay. I disagree with you on that one, by the way. That's are not you one of my gambling bets. But <laughs> I'll have money the other way. Okay. I assure you. Okay. I'm gonna take a little home dog action here. All right. Okay. I've got the Carolina Panthers plus three. I've got the Super Bowl losing. L.A. Rams coming all the way across the world to the other side. I got a healthy Cam Newton. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to play. I think this Panthers team is really good. I, yeah, you I, like this I, defense, don't you? I like. Well, I don't know that. Uh, I like the offense. I like the team. I like the Panthers a lot. I mean, I I picked them to win ten games this year. I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to make a wild card spot, and and probably compete for the division. I'm getting the home dog. Now, you got to lay a little bit of juice. It's uh, minus 125, I believe, if yep. if I'm right. Yeah, I think it's still the same. And, and yeah, I, I think as long as Cam plays, I'm in. I'm absolutely in. Now, if we get to game time, guys, putting this out there, we get to game time. Cam's not playing, A, the number's going to change drastically, yep. and, and I have no way to predict what that number's going to be or what I would do at that point in time. But I think this talent, this this roster is loaded. Yep. I think they're they're super talented. If you look at how they finished the season when Cam was healthy, the offense was just rolling. Um, I think they got some pieces, and 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 I really like them. And also, I, I just think the Rams. I don't know that they're going to do what they did last year. But it's it, it, they're bound to take a step back. Right? I, yeah, and that doesn't mean they're going to be garbage. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to go to an eight and eight team. And no, be mediocre. But it's it's like the Eagles going from, you know, thirteen and three or whatever yeah. it was when they won the Super Bowl. That's right. Back to nine and seven. Yeah. Like still a good team, just not as good as, you know, the Super Bowl kind of year. Correct. So fifty bucks, minus one twenty five. You gotta lay a little bit of juice there. Well, not to mention the fact that it's a West Coast team going to the East Coast for a noon kicker. Oh, like, ho, ho. Can I get an updated line? Since with, we're in the middle of the night. And this is going to be the line people are probably going to have a better chance of getting. Now, I lose a point. I lose a half a point. Instead of plus three, it's now plus two and a half, which I'll take. But I lay 105. Really? So a Rams field goal causes me to lose it. But I think the Panthers are going to win the game outright. So I'd rather have the better juice. Minus 105? Minus 105. Okay. And the shorter line. That might be foolish, but... I mean, at that point, it's almost. That's why I know, gamble. It's almost like, why would you not just take the money line? What's the money line? Plus one thirty. Yeah, plus one thirty. I'm fine. I'm okay. good. I'm, right, I'm going to sit take tight. Take the two and a half. I'm sit tight. All right. It, wait, do with the three or the two and a half? Two and a half. Okay. Two and a right, half. We, we got we got you updated here. All right. All right. Next up for me, I'm going to the new guy, the Detroit Lions. And the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray, this 
high octane, whatever offense. And then on the other side, you got Matt Stafford and you got whatever Matt Patricia's doing. I'm going under the 47 here. I, this makes all the sense in the world to me. The metrics actually have this at, measuring at like 38 points scored, right? I think Patricia has got some dudes on the defensive line. Whenever Kyler Murray gets rushed, whenever he feels pressure, he has not performed well in the preseason. I think this carries over. I don't think that this offense is as complete yet as it will be towards the end of the season. And the Lions, yes, we all talk about the how much Matt Stafford throws the football and, and they got carry on Johnson and all this kind of stuff. There's still dudes on defense for the Cardinals too. I like the under 47 here because I think that it is being overvalued because people think that Kingsbury is going to put up points. Yep. And correct. I don't think he will in week one. I'm going under 47. I'm putting 50 bucks on it at minus 110. All right. One of my favorite bets of the week $100 on my Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I, I love this Bills team. Plus three, laying 115. I think the Bills are going to win outright. I think they're a better football team than the Jets. I, I've, I've listened to so many people, and they keep trying to talk about how this Jets team is going to be the most improved team in all of football. And they're going to win nine games, and they're going to compete for a wild card. I just don't see it. I don't see it. God, I, I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I love, I love Adams over there. That's, that's my guy. He's, he's one of the best defensive safeties in the league. And he's a lot of fun to watch. And they got some, they got some talent on defense. But they got like a few pieces of talent on defense. And then the talent drops off everywhere else. You just can't run a defense like that. This is not how it works. Offensively, I'm not sold. I'm, I'm just not sold. Been wrong before. But until I see, I see it, I, I'm going to continue to go against it. I don't believe in this Jets team. And I really like the Bills. I really like Sean McDermott a lot. I'm going to move up north. Okay. I'm going to Minnesota. And I am a big fan of this pick. Now, it might bite me. You should be. Uh, You're making it. But I'm putting $75 on this one. All right. I've only got two $75 picks. The rest are $50. This is my other $75 one. I've got the Vikings minus four at home against the Falcons. It's minus 105, so I like the juice there. On top of that, Gary Kubiak, Stefanski, that whole bunch. Yep. I am a fan of what they did on offense. I think they get this thing right. You got a healthy Dalvin Cook. You got Kirk Cousins. Uh, you got all sorts of different stuff going on here. They, didn't they just sign uh, Josh Dotson? Yep. Yeah. So you got a little more, like a few more weapons here for Kirk Cousins to work with. And on top of that, like, don't get me wrong. I get it. The Falcons offense, fantastic, right? Great pieces everywhere. They got, uh, they got Freeman back. They got all sorts of stuff going on. Calvin Ridley, Mohamed Sanu, uh, Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, of course, put up basically MVP numbers last year, even though they didn't score much. Uh, a lot he, of yards. A lot of yards. But I'm telling you, that Vikings defense, Zimmer knows what he's doing. Whenever they have an offense that can keep the ball for a little bit, and I think they'll do that with Dalvin Cook and that bunch. I like them here. I think they win this game by at least a touchdown. I got the Vikings minus four. They they erase the bad memories of last season, and get this win at home against the Falcons. Uh, and I, I like them. I like them by a touchdown or more. So mm-hmm. four points ain't nothing here. No. All right. Our, our guy JT and us are going to talk about this TJ. game. TJ, God, I'm going to do that all day long. <laughs> I'm going to do it all. TJ day long. Reeves, Three Dog Thursday podcast. He'll that's, be coming that's up so, right after. That's, this. that's so insulting. To get his name wrong, that's all it's good. It's initials, and I have dyslexia, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it backwards. That's all good. I have it Naps. written down right. Anyway, he's a Tampa guy. Yes, he is. I like the Bucks this year. I, I now you know how you, much a fan you like I am the of the Bucks, or do you like Bruce Arians? I, okay, so I like Bruce Arians. There you go. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Bruce Arians, and I'm a big fan of Todd Bowles. I think he's a really good defensive mind, and I think, I think they're gonna be much improved. Much improved on the defense side of the ball. I think offensively, they're going to get to score. If Jameis can ever stop throwing the ball to the other team, I don't know that he'll ever stop doing that. 
I doubt it. But I think we're okay. I don't know that I'm sold on this 49ers team. Now, I, I like the 49ers, and I like what they're doing. You got a, a West Coast team coming east. Don't care that it's the afternoon game. That's irrelevant to me. It's the travel. It's the out of your, your sorts, and you're not ready to play. Um, now, we do like I Kyle think, Shanahan. We do yes, like, he's, but, he's but Bruce coach, knows but, the 49ers. Yeah. He, he's competing against them for a while. He knows exactly who this team is and what they're capable of doing. Jimmy G coming off the ACL, I think that is a two-year injury. Um, most quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, somehow, for some reason, I think they play these positions and they're fearless. Quarterbacks seem to not be fearless. And so it takes them an, a little bit of adjustment to get back to taking hits after that ACL surgery. Um, I know it did for Tom. Jimmy's not a runner. He's more of a pocket passing guy. Don't like guys at his feet. I think it's going to cause him problems. I'm, it's a it's a straight up pick him. Yeah, I like it. Give me seventy five bucks on the on the bucks, and uh, at minus one ten and a pick him. Um, I like this Tampa team to be to be much improved from last year. So seventy five bucks on the Buccaneers. Yes, sir. Last game for me. You still got another one. I got one more. You got one more. Last game for me. I'm only doing five. Chargers minus six and a half at home against the Indianapolis Colts. It is minus 105. I'm only putting 50 bucks on it. I like Phillip Rivers. I don't think that he liked the way that things ended last year where they were utterly humiliated by the New England Patriots. I think they get to open this one at home. Uh while everybody is, it, like, the hot thing right now is that, well, uh, hold on, just because Andrew Luck got hurt doesn't mean that the Colts are trash. While I do agree with that, I am also of the opinion that Andrew Luck meant a lot to this team. I think that Jacoby Brissett will be pretty good this year. I don't think against this defense that that will be one of those times. The reason I say that Melvin Gordon or Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa, that whole bunch. That that Chargers defense is as legit as it gets in the National Football League. I think they show out. I think Phillip Rivers puts up points. I think they come out and they are firing to show Melvin Gordon that we can do this just fine, whether you're here or not. So you're going to see Justin Jackson. You're going to see whoever else. Austin Eckler. Uh, Eckler, yes, thank you. At, you're going to see people running the football, making plays, and I like the Chargers pretty big here. So the fact that I'm getting juice at minus 105, I'm a fan of this pick. I'm a roll with this one. Uh, got 50 bucks on it. Give me the Chargers minus 6.5, less than a touchdown. So I'm going to go the opposite way with my last pick. <laughs> I like the Colts. I, I do think that the line moved way too much when we found out Andrew Luck is not going to play. I think Jacoby Percet is a professional quarterback. He belongs in this league, and he's really good. I, I absolutely think that. I think Derwin James being out for the Chargers, I think they already are feeling the injury bug over there, which is just something that happens to the Chargers all the time. They can't yep. ever stay healthy. And the other thing is the Chargers don't blow anybody out, ever, ever. All, all you see in these late afternoon games is a three-point game where they're either kicking a field goal to win it or missing a field goal to lose it. So I get six and a half points. I get they get they can kick two field goals and I still win. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I just think the over and it's strictly I think I'm going the opposite way of where everybody else is going. The, the overreaction on what happened with the Colts at one point in time. It was Andrew Luck or nothing. This yeah. way this roster was built for a long time. It's not the way it's rosters built anymore. They're yeah. they're way better coach football team and they're a way better built football team. And and I just think they're gonna show up, they're gonna fight really hard this week, and they're gonna compete. I think the Chargers win the game. I like the Chargers a lot this year, you know that. And 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 I don't I don't think that they lose this game. But I don't think that they blow them out. I don't even know that they win by a touchdown, which is why I take this line. I can get down with it. All right, that's going to wrap up the picks. Let's jump into the interview with our good friend, Mr. TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. All right, on the show, every week we're going to have 
our special guest, TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. He is the sideline guy for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, TJ, thank you for coming in, of course. It's here. It's here. The start of the <laughs> NFL season, the 100th season is here. This is such a big deal in the Tampa Bay area, and every team is doing something like this, either with the opening week or their first couple of games of the season. The Bucks have Tim McGraw coming in to play a concert nice. pregame. Tim McGraw will be rocking inside the stadium on the plaza, inside the stadium for the fans that are coming in getting ready for the opening game with the 49ers. And then he'll even play a set at halftime, Gary and Chris, <laughs> of the game. He'll play another two or three songs at halftime of the game. So let's hope that Tim McGraw is not the high point of Sunday's opener, I Buccaneers, agree. against the 49ers for the home team. Well, let's let's go ahead and talk about the home team. I, you yep. got inside yep. information. Give me yep. that inside. We're trying to make picks here. It's a pick 'em, and I like the the East Coast team against the West Coast team that has to come. Now, obviously, this isn't a noon game, but you know, it's a little bit of a change of pace for somebody coming from the yep. complete opposite well, and side. The big, and, the, and the biggest thing is, what are we getting with Jimmy Garoppolo here? That's the big question for San Francisco. They, they played him some in the preseason, but he's coming off the ACL injury and he where he missed good. basically all of last year. That's right, hadn't looked very good. Bucks new coaching staff with Bruce Arians going to try to get Jameis Winston to cut down on the interception. Look, uh, interceptions, the Bucks don't have any problem scoring points. They got weapons galore at receiver. May have the deepest receiving core in the NFL. I'm talking about like one through eight active roster receivers and tight ends. They're studs. Uh, guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, who everybody's loving for fantasy purposes, two great pass-catching tight ends, O.J. Howard, Cameron Bray. Bucks are not going to have trouble scoring, guys. So the question becomes, defensively, uh, are they going to be better than than what was awful for a lot of last year and 2017 awful defense? Uh, so uh, it's a new coaching staff. Todd Bowles, the former Jets coach, is the defensive coordinator. Um, again, the the Bucks are good at home in the heat. I, I think you got to take a strong look at the Buccaneers. I mean, I, what am I going to say on your show that I'm not taking the Bucks <laughs> on the opening appearance on the show in the NFL? But I think you got to take a look at the Bucks here strongly, just because Garoppolo's an unknown, and San Francisco's still trying to figure it out. I think no, I, agree. I, I totally agree. I think defensively, you brought up Todd Bowles. He is a professional football coach. He's going. He's going to be the best defensive coach that team has had since the Tony Dungy years. Um, he, he will get them to be more improved every week. And then I think they got the best athlete in the entire draft in Devin White. I'm super biased. Mm. I love that kid, mm. though. I, I think he's got so, just nothing but class, and, and he works hard, and he is a freak. Um, he'll learn the defense quickly. He'll be the quarterback on the field for that side of the ball. I, I think the defense is going to be much, much improved. They will not be the doorstep right. that they, they were last they year. Plan, to your point, they plan to blitz more. They plan to play press man coverage more than what we've seen in years. Yeah, Todd's uh, aggressive. Buccaneer defensive backs. So yeah, let's, no, he... let's see if that aggressiveness will pay off. Uh, and again, you, you know, you're riding high with optimism with a new coach. You want nothing better than to get that home win. But San Francisco is not going to come in and lay down. They got big expectations too here. Uh, because they want to be better. They, they have they have really not been very good over the first two years of Kyle Shanahan. So let's see what happens week one, guys. Uh, agreed, agreed. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead because we got to get out of here. We got to make some more picks. We got to do all that. Uh, t- give me some leans. Give me some picks. What might pop up on Three Dog Thursday on Thursday I on your podcast? I love how you put it that way. I'm. Can I stay in the state of Florida? Are you? Uh, yes. A lot of people think I live. I say this all the time. A lot of people think I live in the state of confusion. I live in the state of Florida. <laughs> uh, can I stay in the state of Florida with the Jacksonville Jaguars getting points? What are they getting right now? Like four? Four. four. Five? Four with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I know everybody looks at that game and says, Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City. Here's the thing. Nick Foles barely played in the preseason. It's a new offense. Leonard Fournette is healthy. They're at home Jacksonville may be uh, able to pull a surprise here with Kansas City. No, they're not going to shut them out, but Jack- Jacksonville's defense is good. And yes. I think Foles, in a, in a small dose here, can put some things together. And I would say, watch out Jacksonville Jaguars against the Kansas City Chiefs, boys. 
I, I think I agree with you. Historically, I, the, the opening of the season, especially home dogs cover at an alarming rate, and it's always teams that we don't think have any chance to win. Last year, we thought the Minnesota Vikings were going to compete for the Super Bowl. Everybody across the country right. thought they were going to right. be that. They were laying like 13 points to the uh, – or they were giving 13 points to the Bills. The Bills went yes, in they. into Minnesota <laughs> – Laying that many <laughs> catching that many points and drumming. beat them outright and beat them up physically. It happens all the time. We just there's nobody that could predict it, and it's the reason why you just close your eyes, you hold your nose, and you bet the home dog, and you say, "I'm just going to go with it," because the numbers yeah. say it. You're going to work out better than it's not. No doubt. And you mentioned that Bills upset that blew up about 85 percent of the suicide pools across America, yes, no if doubt. not the world, on that upset. I don't know that this Jaguar upset will be the same magnitude for the suicide pools and otherwise, but I mean, it's true that they're a home underdog and look, they came out of nowhere two years ago to make the playoffs. If you watched that Jacksonville team in the preseason with Blake Bortles two years ago, I love the Southern phrase. You boys are, are in the mid South. I wouldn't have given you a plug nickel for the, <laughs> for the Jaguars coming off that preseason. And they destroyed the Houston Texans in the opening game yep. and rattled off like three or four wins and won 10 games and won the division. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. They're going to win 10 games and win the AFC South. But I think in this spot with Foles and his debut, they could win that game. I will. I think I'm taking those points for the Jaguars. Now, before I let you go, since you are in the state of Florida, I am curious about this. We we talked about home dogs. Do Miami Dolphins fans have any prayer <laughs> for this season? That's, they, Do they, they have any prayer of being favored in any game for 16 games? I, I'm not I sure. So. I I don't think they're going to be favored in any of them. Look, I mean, they they have they are doing what John Gruden did a year ago with the Raiders. They are going to strip this all the way down to the framework and the studs on the floor, if you're talking about like a house. Yes. There's nothing going to be left. They are essentially uh, right now building around a couple of young draft picks, some young players, and what can we get next year in free agency in the draft. And it, it may be a 2-14, and 1-15 type year. Uh, Josh, you know, Josh Rosen's got to be thinking, what the heck here about this NFL <laughs> stuff? I was in Arizona last year, and it's a disaster. Now I come here, and they get rid of all of the high-priced veteran players that could help you win a few games. Uh, nobody ever thought that Miami was going to be a 7-8-9 win team. But but seriously, guys, I mean, you're, you're looking at a roster where this could go very bad with a first-year coach and could be like 1-15. It, it could be that kind of year in South Florida. Would, would they build around Brian Flores? Like that's it. go ahead, Chris. You, no, you so, so I'm so I'm. Listen, I, I'm partial to Brian Flores. I think he's going to be a really good coach. I, I almost wonder, did he get a job too early? And then will a year like this tarnish his resume? If the front office is intentionally tanking, is there any way that a guy like him can put that asterisk on the resume and say, "Look, guys, th- this was a rebuilding year." I can't wear this, but look, I don't. Yeah, look at what we I, do it's a good point you make. I, I don't think this is like Steve Wilkes in in Arizona, where they were just a disaster and there was not a plan, and he's fired in one year after being a longtime defensive coordinator. I think they're they're doing this because Brian, Brian Flores comes out of New England and he's saying, "Look, uh, we don't need high priced guys to win, and we need to strip this down and have some salary cap room and get some better younger players." And I, I think he's in on the input of doing this. Good. So, M- Miami fan does not want to hear that right now. But they're gonna they're gonna take their lumps, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if Baltimore beats them like a drum. They're one of the most well coached teams that there is. They they uh, they rarely make mistakes to beat themselves. Miami will make enough mistakes for both teams on Sunday in that matchup. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, we're going to let you get out of here. Uh, Everybody go check out Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can get it anywhere you get your podcasts. You can get him on Twitter, at BuckSidelineGuy. He is TJ Reeves. TJ, we appreciate you jumping in, buddy. Long live the underdogs. Long live the NFL starting. Thank you, boys. Good to be with you. Absolutely. Have a good one, man. All right, we appreciate TJ for being here. That is going to wrap it up. That is the NFL Gambling Picks Show. That is the College Football Gambling Picks Show, if you're listening on the podcast as well. Uh, If you are listening on the podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button. 
Share the show out with your friends. Leave a nice five-star review on Apple Podcasts, if you could, please. We would appreciate that. It helps us out more than you understand, I think. Maybe you do understand. Either way, please help us out. Do that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Tell us what your picks are. Make sure you go over and enter in the Football Picks Contest and get your shot at a Tunica prize pack this week. Last week was Matthew C., and he won with a 7-3 and three record. He hit the tiebreaker. We had like seven guys that had 7-3 and three records, but he got the closest to the total. I'm about to sneeze all over the place. Good Lord. What a way to end the show. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go to tunicatravel.com. We will see you guys again the next go-round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.